Hi folks! Today, on request, I will discuss with you um, the proper course of gypsy jazz in general and the differences between the typical gypsy jazz chords and the normal jazz voicings. Especially um, the difference between the minor 6 chord and the minor 7 chord and also um, the way you play the tonic chords, the subdominant chords and the dominant chords in general. Well, let's start with the major chord forms. In normal jazz music, the typical major chord form, let's say we're in the key of A, is A major 7. That one. This is the typical jazz sound if you're playing a compé. You know? It is an A on the E string, the A string is muted, then we got G sharp on the G D string, C sharp on the G string, and E on the B string. And this is an A major 7 chord. Now in gypsy jazz music, we avoid the 7 and instead of that, we play a 6. So if you look at that shape, the most easy way to do it, all the notes stay the same except for the 7, who needs to be a 6. So this would be an A major 6 chord. Now that voicing ain't really typical for gypsy jazz music because of his two fingers Django couldn't play it and um, uh, there are other voicings that are more typical but this voicing is fine. If you're playing old time music, old time swing music, gypsy jazz, swing music, the 6 voicing sounds more uh, authentic than the major 7 voicing. You know. And um, the typical gypsy jazz voicings from with the root of the E string are that one. So the thumb is playing the bass on the E string, fifth fret. The middle finger is playing two strings at the same time. The E on the A string and the A on the D string. While the first finger is playing the third, the C sharp and the third finger is playing F sharp and natural B at the same time. You got this sound. And this is the typical gypsy jazz rhythm guitar sound. It's just all six strings are covered and all six strings are ringing. So, a different way to play that chord is some people uh, uh, find it difficult to uh, play uh, several strings with just one finger without using a bar chord by placing in between the strings and we often see this chord. So now the middle finger is not playing E and A at the same time but the middle finger and the ring finger are playing these two notes. The first finger stays on the third and the pinky is playing the F sharp which is the sixth of this A major sixth chord. And still we can play the thumb on the lower E string to put the root into the bass. And this is pretty much the same chord. And if you can get it, you can um, play with the pinky these two strings at the same time, and then it's exactly the same chord, just with a different fingering. But what's also fine is to leave away the lower and upper E string, just play the middle strings. And that sounds absolutely fine while playing rhythm guitar. It's also a good sound. So, and this is the typical major chord from the E string. Now, uh, from the D string, of course, we have to go to the 12th fret. And the most often used voicing is that one. Of course, when we play A, this is very high, but for C, or for D, or for E, it's perfect. For all the chords that uh, happen between fret 1 and fret we are 10, you know. But I will show it to you in A, because we're in A, actually. Now the middle finger is playing the 5th on the lower E string, which is the E. Then the root on the A string, the A, of course. The first finger is playing the um, C sharp, which is the third of A, and the F sharp, which is the sixth. And with the ring finger, 
we play the 9, the natural B, 12th fret on the B string, and the E again, the 5th on the upper E string. So that's the sound. And same as we had before in the 5th fret, uh, we can make that one simpler by leaving away some notes. For example, we don't have to play the E and the A at the same time. A is okay, we can just play the A, and then we have one, we can play um, with the pinky, the E, so you don't have to play B and E with one finger, you can play it with two fingers, if that is easier for you. Or again, you can leave out the lower and upper E string, just play the middle of that chord, and that also sounds good. And these are the two most often used major six chord in gypsy jazz music, actually. So, uh, now if it comes to minor, there is a special thing concerning minor. And that special thing has to do with the six instead of the seventh. In normal jazz music, we usually play minor seven chords as a tonic chord and as a subdominant chord. For example, typical jazz blues, we would play like typical sound because the seven sounds very bluesy. We got the root here, the A and G is the seven. And this is something which I would consider as typical American. If you listen to that chord it's it's a typical blues sound. And even if we play more uh, scale more scale stuff like the Dorian scale, which happens a lot in modal music and also in the minor blues. This is a typical sound of seven. This is the typical sound of the American jazz music and the American blues music. But in gypsy jazz music, we don't play. The G, it, this chord happens too in gypsy jazz music, but not as a tonic chord or as a subdominant chord. The, ma the minor seven chord is only uh, happening when uh, within a two-five progression, two-five-one progression, not as a tonic chord and not as a subdominant chord. So what we do, we play the minor six chord. So when we got the seven here, we play the natural six here, and this is the typical minor six sound. And also while soloing, we leave out the 7 because it sounds very modern, it gives it another touch. The 6 is a very dark and typical European classical sounding note inside the minor chord. And if you listen to the solo players in that style, they avoid the 7 and they have more of that F sharp in it. Like seven here yeah this is the typical sound of that music and this voicing is the most often used you place your middle finger on the E string A string is muted the first finger is playing the F sharp on the D string and the third finger is playing C G string fifth fret and then with a little bar chord, the E, B string, 5th fret, and again A, E string, 5th fret. And this is the typical and most easiest minor 6 chord. The other one that is used very often in the same position on the fretboard for A um, is a very, uh, is, um, how do you say that? It, it, it's, it's very similar to the major chord. Remember the major chord? The third is here on the G string. All you gotta do is place the first finger one, one fret below on the C instead of the C sharp, and then you got the minor six chord. All other notes are also fitting because you got the root here. Middle finger is playing E and A, which is the fifth and the root, both good notes for both chords, major or minor. Then we got the minor third, this is new, and the upper strings. F sharp is the natural six again. It's working for minor and major as well. And the 9 
is also working for minor and major as well, and that will be. And again, you can make this simpler because this chord is really tricky and takes a lot of practice. So you can make it simpler by just playing the middle strings, leave, leave away the upper E string, you can still play the root with your thumb. Or you can even, what some players do uh, in fast uh, tempi, for example, and when this chord is just played, let's say, for half a bar or something, you can just play these three strings. Just the A on the D string, fret 7, a minor third with the fifth fret on the G string, and F sharp on the B string. And this works perfect. Now on the A string, we have a very small voicing, only three notes, that one. We play the A with the middle finger, 12th fret, then the F sharp, the 6th on the G string, 11th fret. And with the pinky, we only play the C, the minor 3rd, fret 13. And again, up here, this is, this is not used very often, but when you're in the key of D, for example, a second chord of minor swing, you play this chord very often. And you can even double the 5th, uh, not double the 5th, put the 5th in when you place your ring finger on the upper E string. Then another option that's very common is instead of the also in that position of the fretboard, you don't um, put the root in the bass, but you put the natural six in the bass, and then the minor six chord is, ex is exactly the same chord. Then the F sharp minor seven flat five or F sharp sharp half diminished chord. We got the natural six here. We got the C, which is the minor third of A, tenth fret on the D string. We got the 5th, 9th fret on the G string, and we got the root with the pinky, 10th fret on the B string. Now these are the most often used chords for a minor 6 chord. That one, that one with variations, that one, and of course, last one, that one. These are the most often used chords. And um, when we go come to the dominant chords, the dominant chords are pretty much the same voicings uh, than in normal jazz music too, and it depends. There are a lot of dominant chords concerning the options. Uh, the options means you have options concerning the upper structure notes, whether it's a flat 13 or a net root 13 or it's a flat 9 or a natural 9, stuff like that. There are many options, but the most common dominant chord, I will demonstrate that on A, is that one. It's just a dominant 7 chord, no options in there, so it fits all the time, no matter if it leads to a major chord or a minor chord. Again, you play the root with your thumb, A string is muted, first finger is playing the G, uh, the, G the 7th on the D string, third finger is playing the major 3rd on the G string, 6th uh, fret, and the first finger is playing the 5th, the E on the B string. This is the most common voicing. Some players add the pinky to double the fifth so that it is exactly the same chord than the normal bar chord of A7 but without the upper E string. That one. And what you can also do is just play the lower four strings. A on the E string, C sharp on the a string, G again on the D string, and the pinky now is playing the third. That chord happens a lot. When we go to the A string, it looks very similar to the A major 6 chord. The only difference is, is that the ring finger is not only playing the upper two strings, but the upper three strings. So instead of the 6, the F sharp and the 11th fret, we got the 7, the G and the 12th, 12th fret. And again, instead of playing all six strings, you could just play the middle or leave away the upper E string and mute it with your middle finger while it's slightly touching the E string. And this is a dominant 7 9 chord. And this is used very often in Gypsy Jazz because it was very comfortable for Jungle to play it with only two fingers and the remaining, yeah, let's say, rest of his ring finger and pinky. 
So this chord happened a lot. And uh, even if it's uh, not correct from a harmonic standpoint, sometimes in gypsy jazz, you know, you have a dominant chord that leads to a minor chord, and the nine is not the best option because the flat nine would be the best option for the minor scale. For example, in A, the flat nine would be the F, which is, of course, a, a very important note, the flat nine, in the content of the, of, of the alterate scale or of the diminished chord of F diminished, which lies over the E dominant seven chord. But nevertheless, the players often do play dominant seven natural nine voicings. And because of the rhythm, that doesn't disturb anyone. You know, you don't really hear it, but it happens very often. When you want to play a more uh, neutral uh, voicing, you play the common A dominant 7 voicing, which happens here all the time. It's like the normal campfire C chord. Pinky is added on G strings for, for the 7th. And of course, in the 12th fret, this chord works for A. So now there's actually only one chord remaining. This is the diminished chord, and when you have these four chords that we just discussed, you'll be... Uh, okay, the half diminished chord is still missing, but with these four chords you can play almost every gypsy jazz tune. And the diminished chord type is the same than in jazz music, like this or like this. A with the middle finger, same as with the minor sixth chord, A string is muted. And then we got, again, the F sharp, and then we got the C with the ring finger, and then we got the flat 5 and while, uh, while playing a bar chord here with the first finger. This is the A diminished chord. And while playing rhythm guitar, you can move that one along the fretboard in thirds, in minor thirds. And it's always the same chords, the notes are just turning around, you know. And the half diminished chord as well is the same than in normal jazz music. On the E string it's that voicing, middle finger on the A, A string is muted, then we got the 7, the minor third, and again the flat 5. And when you play that one on the A string, it's that one, I already showed you that one as a as a option for A minor 6 in the ninth fret, here it's A minor 7, flat 5. And the, of course, the really diminished chord on the A string would be like this. The only difference is G and F sharp. Now, these are the basic chord for, chords for gypsy swing music. And if you can play these chords, I think it were just like two, three, yeah, just, just like a bunch of voicings, just, I think less than 10 voicings, and you will get along with that kind of style pretty well. And I hope that helped you and I wish you all the best. Bye bye.